Kes name just came up. That's quite an interesting one. Uh, Kes administration just a couple of months ago organized uh, a congress. The last that last congress you never attended. However, you you are part of a group of people, 53 others who have said that you want an extraordinary congress to review parts of the statutes of of the Ghana FA. Why do, are you demanding uh, a review of the statutes of the Ghana FA? There has been breach of a social contract that we signed when normalization organized the Congress to review the statutes of the FA. There were so many segments of the statutes that football people were not happy with. We set up committees to review the statutes. Mr. Anto Fianco was part of it. Madam Abi Bata was part of it. Uh, Kofi Menu was part of it. Um, oh. Abu Jones was also part. The late Abu Jones? Yeah, the late Abu Jones was part of it. Gaka also formed a committee to do the same so that we will have a comprehensive review of the document. When we appeared before the normalization, they had taken an entrenched position on the statutes to implement whatever had been put out there. So Dr. Randy Abe made a very cogent suggestion that since we are limited in terms of negotiations, we should accept the statutes as organ in situ, that is as situated by the normalization. So that when normalization leaves the scene, we as football people will meet in the Congress to be scheduled so that any review or amendments to be made to the document will go ahead and do it. The current executive council and the president were all major stakeholders to this particular Congress for which we signed this social contract. Now, having assumed authority at the FA, our colleagues who were part of this contract have clandestinely denied Congress members of this opportunity to do this review. Nabila, we've had two Congresses. There hasn't been any contribution whatsoever from a member with regard to the, the amendments to the statutes or any regulation. All the amendments had been submitted by the Executive Council or the Presidency. When you look at 25 of the statutes, it specifies that Congress is the supreme legislative authority when it comes to any amendment or anything in relation to the law, whether you are drafting a new one here and there and whatnot. It's Congress that it has to happen. And over the period, this is what has been happening. When our own colleagues took over, they have, one way or the other, avoided amendments coming from congressmen. Rav Jamra triggered this process last year. That is 2020. It never saw the day of light. The moment he triggered it, FIFA was written to, to seek opinion as to whether we have the right to call for those amendments or not. And strangely enough, I have not cited that document, but I'm told that if I wrote to tell us that it was too early to amend the, the constitution or the statutes of the FA. How come you've not cited Because I read it last year. Yeah, you read it. But whoever wrote that document did a great disservice to football. It was written by Veron Musungo Omba, who is now the, the general secretary of CAF. It's the same Veron who came here and he said all sort of things. He hasn't got the right to do that because within our statutes, there's no prescribed time 
within which you can make amendments or not. So, so what are your concerns now in relation to the 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 new structure of Ghana football coming up? I'll, I'll, I'll come to that because, uh, Nabila, I don't want listeners to reduce our resolution to only the reduction of our delegates from 48 to 18. I don't want, because that is not what is in our resolution. It touches on so many areas. Okay. So I just wanted the precedence for uh, 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 the, the, the people to understand. Appreciate, where appreciate the trajectory. Yeah. So they have done convocation. And convocation has been made to such an extent that members are not allowed any time for you to suggest amendments. So, Raf, the technical uh, blow that was dealt to that resolution was that you couldn't meet the 30-day period. Accepted. This year, convocation was made two weeks to the time. The same 30-day period could not have been met. So the question is, why is the executive doing their convocation within the time period that members could have tabled a proposal to amend. It's a strategy so that no amendment can come from any quarters. Now, agenda was sent to members this year and part of the agenda, they have stated a whole lot, football pyramid, autonomous league, but no document was attached to this agenda which means that you cannot discuss this agenda in Congress. Because before you are able to discuss it, you table it before Congress for that motion to take effect. There is a need for members to be apprised with the content of the, of, the, of the said proposal. This never happened. No votes were taken at Congress, so you cannot implement such a policy. But that said and done, we realize that the executives were bent on implementing it. So some of us started making references to our status. And it was clear that there's been infringement on this. The reason why this resolution has been made is that there has been fractions on the corporate governance system at the FE, consistently and persistently by the current executive council. We are constantly referred to Article 39K of the status, and that is very categorical. It states that the current executive council, by their powers vested in them by the status, can approve and issue regulations governing what governing uh, 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 football in Ghana. Nabila, if you want to understand law, it's about English. It's about English. You can approve. Approving what? Approving something that has been amended by another group. Or a proposal that has been tabled by another group. You cannot table your own proposal and approve it. Otherwise, where is the checks and balances? There is no control within such structure at the FE. So people interpreted the approve and issue to mean that they can amend our regulations. Remember when Mediama were to lose some points because of yellow card issue? Because this amendment was not made at Congress. So members were caught midstream. They didn't know exactly what had happened to the status. And the response was that, oh, we sent the amendments to your email. How many people will read that kind of document? If I'm part of the process and I've been given the legislative power to amend. Why would you take that legislative power when you are not clothed with that legislative power? So our idea or the resolution is to go to Congress and make sure that if the 39K is creating any ambiguity in the minds of the executive, we, we, we take it out of the status because there cannot be any conflict in the fact that it is the annual Congress that is clothed 
with the legislative power to amend our statutes and any regulations. Currently, when CAF wanted to make amendments to the structure of the uh, Champions League, there was an extraordinary congress for which our president and uh, the general secretary willingly and willfully attended and legally attended. Why are we being denied of similar opportunity in Ghana? That we, as in Congress members, who are the owners or legitimate owners of the company or corporate GFE, we do not have the right to make amendments by rather the executives that we have put out there that manage the company for us. They can detect to the owners of the company that this is the direction that we must go. But the owners cannot reciprocate whatever they are doing. I don't think any corporate governance anywhere will allow this. No, it doesn't happen. That executives are rather making laws and detecting the laws on the owners of the company. It's not the way around. So we have the view that that particular article must be dealt with because it's being abused, misused for the purpose that they want to use it for. And before we'll be aware, we have been used for quite so long. So we have made it or stated it in our uh, uh, resolution that that should be gotten rid, rid of. We have the women's league. We have the Premier League. All the Premier League clubs in Ghana, they have two votes, making it 36 votes. The women are 20 now. Within our proposal, we are saying that every premier club at the women's level should also be given a delegate each so that they will not go for a mini congress to approve those who are eligible to vote in the main congress. So that we will not be seen as discriminating against women. The affirmative action must start now. And some of us even contend that the uh, Division I of the Women's League, there, sh there should be concession made towards that. Aren't you intending to expand the Congress? The electoral college must be expanded. It must Why? Be expanded so that nobody in his right thinking mind can influence any of the delegates. Because the smaller the number, the easier it is for them to be influenced. The MPP, they've shown the way. That is how come they expanded the electoral college of those who vote for the presidency and other members of the what, of the party, executive members of the party. That is democracy. In democracy, the larger the voters, the better it is because you cannot go and more or less use money or any material thing to influence the voters. Are you suggesting that it is possible to buy electorates? Nabila, we are in Ghana. Everything is possible. I cannot speak to anything, but I will go for the kind of system that will make that an impossibility or something that nobody will think of embarking upon. So you have to safeguard your own elections. You put it in a certain realm that nobody will contaminate our electoral processes at the FA. So don't reduce the number. Rather expand it so that you can nobody can influence the elections. Simple, simple. You are rather suggesting that uh, uh, RFEs, their delegates to Congress have been reduced. Their membership at the Executive Council level have been reduced from 10 to 2. These two will go for a meeting. They return from the meeting. And members at the RFA level would like to know what happened at the meeting. Be reminded that these two have signed that oath of secrecy. So do you think they have the legal rights to divulge the information to their members? They cannot. So eight of the regions are curtailed so far as information flow is concerned from the FA. Some of us who are abreast with the functionality of the RFA, we quit 
it to the FA presidency or the FA executive at the regional level. It is very involving. If previously we were of the view that most of the RFAs or the chairman do not function well, you need to put in place a system at the regional level that will make the RFAs functional. And this can be achieved. You can have a general secretary or a chief executive at that level. You can also have an IT expert. You can have a staff members or a project manager. The FA will have to be served with quarterly reports from the uh, uh, regional level. These reports must be reviewed and submitted at the executive council level whenever we, uh, the executive council meets. Then decisions will be made on this. Whilst this chairman will be present to deliver this report or speak to the issues raised in the report. This is the way to make the RFAs functional. But you cannot conclusively conclude that since Mr. A couldn't function at the regional level, when another person comes, that person cannot function. I have members like Kotoro, Osetutu, a very credible person, solid material. Rav Jamra, I mean, somebody who is studying law, uh, the least said about it, the better. You have Abuja. He's a water regional uh, solid material. You have Robert Duncan from Central Region. The Western Regional, uh, uh, what's the name? Uh, Simon. All these people are of a certain level of substance. They cannot go to the Executive Council by virtue of the fact that only two people are allowed to be at that le level. And you are telling me that they are not functional. Nabila, it may interest you to note that the regional level, every region is unique on its own. The challenges encountered by Brown Hafu RFE, it's not the same thing that Qatar is encountering at the Greater Accra region. So when Qatar is at the executive council level, what advice or what information flow would he give to the brown half person? The system as presently constituted is bad. So we have the view that all the regions must be well represented at the executive council level. That's going to be quite a huge executive committee. If you do 27 membership, there's nothing huge about this. But even at FIFA, it's not 27. We have peculiar circumstances and it must be dealt with. FIFA has only five or so continents. Seven. Seven continents. So every continent will have one person representing them. So it makes the mark very easy. Then people have voted from various uh, zones to represent. That's how come that number is, is, is there. They have designed their structure in such a manner that they pick information, vital information, from these sources and use it to implement their policies. We will also have to fashion out a similar, uh, 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 we have 10 regions. That is what it is. Now we have 16. 16. So let's design a system that will bring all of them on board. But previously, only 10. We can start with that. Because the other regions, I don't think the FA is present. Brown is still controlling the uh, uh, Bono, Bono and uh, all those say, and the same Western region, the same. So it it is not active. That is what we say. When you talk to referees, they have their own issues. They are not happy about the way things are moving. If you talk to coaches, they are not happy. Fusa, they are not happy. Beach soccer, they are not. So let us look at the statutes as it is, and 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 propose. The, the, or deal with the proposed amendments that we are suggesting to make things work. After all, this was part of the social contract. We had agreed at the, at the normalization congress for us to embark upon. So why are people going against the social contract that we signed? It's betrayal of trust in its highest order. And you know how risky that is. Next time, when people talk politics at the football level, 
people will not take them serious. Let's talk about the, the Super League. I've never seen a jurisdiction or head anywhere where you have a Super League and a Premier League. If you have one, you can share with me. Where you have the Premier League, the next league is either the Championship or they will refer to the National Division One. That is what it pertains elsewhere. So anybody who would just like to coin names and give it to a league that is being played is, is just engaging in semantics. Nabila, they are talking about football pyramid. I've never seen a pyramid with a flat top. A pyramid has a sharp apex. And by football pyramid, you can Google. When you Google, they will tell you. This is the kind of leg system that has so many clubs at the base, but smaller clubs at the what, at the apex. And that is understandable. But as and when you move into the elitist level of any leg system or any leg structure, only few people can play at the what? At the elitist level. Go to England, you will realize that uh, uh, I think 20 or 18 clubs. 20 Premier League clubs, and you have 24 playing in the championship. So this is a, a pyramid. Go to Egypt, go to Turkey, go to, that is what is being practiced elsewhere. But in our case, they are suggesting a pyramid that has 18 Premier League clubs and 18 DB, uh, uh, Super League clubs. How can you have 18 and 18? The, if you want to do a Super League, then we should have more clubs playing at the Super League than the what? Than the Premiership to have a pyramid. So the pyramid that was as described at Congress is not, after all, not a pyramid. You, you. It's a what? It's 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 a facade. Deceiving this, I mean, a deception in this size order. Nabila, Google autonomous league. You realize that when you Google autonomous league, it's only Ghana that will appear. You Google. No, but you don't have autonomous league anyway. It, what, what, what we, ha we, have, we can have a semi-autonomous league because the member association of FIFA is supposed to control the regulations that governs the game. Voila. So, Nabila, how can you move to Congress and go and deceive the whole Ghana? The Ghana, we are going to practice an autonomous league that is non-existent in this part of the world. Let me tell you something. What can trigger a change in the league structure is the fact that this league system that we are using is not giving us the results that we expect. For crying out loud, this system has produced four-time African champions over a given period. Am I right? This has produced under 20 champions. Recently, we won the Wafu one, right? So if the system is giving you results, why do you want to tamper with it? The current system is pyramidal as compared to what they want to introduce. To be fair to the Ghana FA, when I was at the Congress, um, I did hear the Secretary General Prosper mention that there is no autonomous league in the world, but a semi-autonomous league because the FA have the right to the regulations, selecting of referees for matches and all that. So when I see Congress agenda and there's autonomous league there, why would I attend that Congress? You are going to, you are going to discuss something that is imaginary, that doesn't exist. So why would I be there? It's about commercialization. Nabila, if you go into the nitty gritty of it, you realize that a leg is a structure or a system. The moment you touch one, it, have, it seeps through, it affects everybody. Touch the premiership and it will affect division one. That's how a leg system is. In your resolution, you mentioned that even the competition they are trying to introduce is not recognized by the statutes of the FA. I'm coming to, I'm coming to that. You have laid legal basis for the introduction of the 18 club league. That is non-existent. You refer to Article 18.1, the closest of what they intended doing. Take the entire Article 81 and comprehensively deal with it. You realize that Article 81 talks about transitional provision. Transitional provision was relevant at the time that we were transiting from normalization to the current dispensation. Two years down the line, are you telling me that transitional provision is still relevant to the extent that 
an FA executive committee that took over would like to implement what has been enshrined in the transitional provision. How would they be incumbent upon them? They are not under any obligation to apply what should have happened two years ago. They are not under any obligation. But, but it's, it says within, within two years into office. No one can have that as a transitional provision. You cannot burden any future administration with a provision that you, who did the statutes, you will not be there to implement it. Why would you do something for me to implement it and you label it as part of transitional? If it was not part of the transitional provision, that would have been okay. So check through the transitional provision. You will realize that all the uh, uh, letters labeled there, they've been implemented except the, this 81.6. That has not been implemented. Which means that those that were mentioned as transitional pro provisions were truly transitional provisions. What has not been implemented couldn't have been transitional. I talk to any legal person, they would tell you. But, 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 but uh, uh, Palmer, if, if the FA Congress accepted this document on September 25, 2019, it is binding on the FA to implement it. Uh, the same Congress can undo what was accepted. But the Congress have not assembled to undo it. Because of tactical disposition of the current executive council. So since it hasn't been changed, <laughs> they still have to implement it. And in implementing it, you don't have to put a spin on what you intend implementing. I'll call it a spin. Spin in the sense that, check the 816 that they are referring to. They say in two years' time, our delegates at the Division one level will be reduced from 48 to 18. Nabila, delegates are not clubs. Delegates, you cannot equate delegates to clubs. In the sense that when you check our status, we have 36 premiership delegates. Do we have 36 clubs? No. We have eight delegates at the premier level of what? Of the women. But we have 16, now 20 clubs that are vying at that level. So you can never equate delegates to clubs. So what is the legal basis that they are leaning on to introduce the 18 club league? That said article never, never, never refers to, referred and refers to 18 clubs. So why would anybody put a spin on it for people to believe that this is what has been enshrined in our statutes? No, but, but are they saying that because they want to reduce the clubs to 18, they are reducing because they've asked them to reduce the number of delegates? They are saying that the statute is saying they should reduce it from 48 clubs to 18. And we have come through the statute. There is nothing in it that mentions 48 to 18 clubs. There is nothing there. Nothing there. It talks about delegates being reduced from 48 to 20, for which we even, even oppose it. So are you saying that we can still have those 48 Division One clubs, but we'll have only 18 delegates? That, that is what is intended in the statute, as situated. Because the uh, 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 women's Premier League, they have, they had 16, eight delegates voted at Congress. This is what it was. I, I, I get in it, and this is what it is now that we are practicing until it is changed. So why would anybody insinuate that? Oh, the moment they mention that we should reduce it from 48 delegates to 18 delegates. They mean that they should reduce it from 48 clubs to 18 clubs. It's not there. So the legal basis that you are even standing on is not there. So why, so why, why do you describe it as an offense? Offense? Offensive. Yeah, in the sense that, Nabila, somebody will say, because I'm 17 at the school school, we have taken the pains to educate ourselves. So if somebody comes to you and is trying to sell chalk to you as paracetamol, <laughs> as paracetamol, would you accept it? Well, when, if you don't take time and you go and take that medication, God, heaven knows what may happen to you. So they are trying to sell chalk to us as paracetamol. 
Three questions, then we move on. Okay, let me let me explain further. Yeah. You see, Nabila, everything there's a preamble, or it has happened before. We used to have in our statutes that we should have 18 club Premier League. That wasn't the case then. But we did an amendment to move it from 16 to 18 clubs. Olympics and Kinvesa had a legal tussle with the FA, for which there was the need for the matter to be settled out of court. I'm a Division One club, and I was, I was in Division One. We agreed to it because in any matter, you have to make sure that whatever you are introducing should have a human face. You should not insist on certain rights. So we all agreed. When we went to Congress, another proposal was tabled because we're going to relegate five teams in the subsequent year. So the premiership clubs appealed to all of us that it would be too harsh. People's investments would be endangered. They gave all the reasons. We saw the reasoning in what they, they, they proposed. We agreed to the fact that they shouldn't demote five because it was going to be too harsh on the premier clubs. The division one clubs, we all voted that only three clubs should be relegated. Who could have also tabled the motion that, oh, relegate four, then you also promote four. It's scratch my back, I also scratch your back. And we had the numbers to do that. We failed to press the button. We gave, we caved in to whatever proposal that was because it was very, very, very uh, attractive. Now, it has come to our turn. They say 30 clubs are to be demoted. And we say that is too harsh. The premier, some feeling elitists, do not want to back us. They are so self-centered that they have forgotten that two years ago, we bent backwards to make some of them maintain their premiership status. Because if you draw the line, that if they had relegated five clubs, Anna Meso, Mekahuana, we are appealing to the premiership. Some have signed that this is not something meant for only Division One. They are also affected because when we are able to have a solid Division One competition, we'll be able to produce players for the premiership. Georgia Fuyo will say a Premier League club is a potential Division One club next season. Voila, that is what it is. I don't think my colleagues did the impact assessment well. Whenever you are introducing any policy, or you go on a consultancy, you consult for any any company, you do restructuring here and then whatnot. Like when they introduced the um, uh, fence up, the ERP, they did the environmental assessment uh, uh, analysis, and it is clear that people suffered. So when they introduced the ERP and what they introduced Pamscat. Uh, uh, to alleviate uh, social cost of what adjustment. Okay. You are introducing a policy, and when you ask them, have they done the impact assessment well? It's such. When you touch the Division 1, it's a system. If you demote 30 clubs, currently we have 82 referees officiating at that level. Can you, will you use the 82 referees to officiate at Division 1. You have invested money to train these people and they will move to the regional championship to go and referee at that level. There will be redeployment. Their incomes will be what? Will be affected. Economic circumstances will be affected and Ghana will suffer in the final analysis. When you are about to implement any policy as an administrator, you do what you call environmental impact analysis. And within that, you will find the various stakeholders will be affected by the policy directions or directive that you are giving to those that you govern. It's done at the global level. It's also done at the governmental level. So you remember when ERP 
was introduced, the government went for a policy to introduce PAMSCAD to alleviate the poverty that the ERP had caused. That is the way you position yourself as a policymaker. Now, you look at the football and the various stakeholders within the football fraternity, and you look at the impact that the introduction of your policy will have on the respective stakeholders that you govern or you supervise. In relation to referees, we have 82 referees at the Division One level. So if you redeploy them and you send 30 clubs to the regional championship, you are one way or the other demoting the referees from Division One to move and go and referee at the regional championship level. I don't care as to how you call the regional championship, it's still the Division Two as we have, certainly something is not regular here. You cannot take such a measure. Having trained these referees, invested in them, sent them on various programs, they are only awaiting promotion to a higher level. Now, they are rather being demoted to a lower level. It doesn't augur well for continuity in terms of football development. Because when we talk of football development, it's not only the player development. We are looking at refereeing development. We are also looking at coaches who will develop within the system. As I, I refer to as the, one of the pillars of football, it's about football development. Okay. Now you look at coaches. We have over 140 license A coaches in Ghana. Some of them certainly are handling Division I clubs. I know of Bofuakwa, uh, fantastic coach. We played them at the top uh, uh, eight, and he was up there. Asna also has Ama, who is also a licensed A coach. It should tell you and inform you that when you demote the clubs to the regional championship, 30 of such clubs with their coaches will go down there. And what will happen? There will be redeployment they will go and take lower salary because at the regional championship, it's not as attractive as the national division one. So certainly, you cannot maintain your salary at that level. Economic circumstances will change, so you cannot go there. That is how come the referees supported and appended their signature to this resolution. You look at uh, 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 coaches, they did the same. Now, players, PFAG, we, no, we never contacted them, but I'm of the view that they should have even mooted this resolution in the sense that when such redeployment comes in, 30 times 30, which is about 900 players, are going to be demoted to play at the regional championship level. And you ask them what will become of their economic circumstances. Certainly, you are going to derail the processes. Most of them cannot survive. Some may even become social misfits. And we all know the implications that it will have on the uh, uh, criminal level and all those things because most people are playing, exerting their energy at the football level, reducing crime. So if you do that, the impact or the social impact or economic impact of such a move will be devastating on players. So a PFAG should support this. Clubs. Every club within Division 1, you don't have any business to stand aloof when such a policy is being forced down your throat. In the sense that, they say, uh, 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 if you are close to the scene of action, you feel the impact higher and bigger than somebody who is at the remote or remotest level of, your, of, of the impact that it will have on you. As and when we move, if there is, this ceiling is falling, Nabila, I will, I will save myself before thinking of you. So we need to save ourselves. And overwhelmingly, we had 36. We know that the 12, having started this league and the way things are going, will, 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 will stand to reason with this. Nabila, somebody may say that, oh, Tamayut, you've been doing well over the period. So certainly, when they talk of six, you may be part of it. No. You don't isolate yourself in a situation because in a league situation, anything can happen. You can have a bad season and your position will be said that you will go to... Uh, you will go down. Yeah. If you analyze the zone three that we are, 
there are about 12 clubs that can place first to sixth. So you ask yourself, will you, among the, will you be among the six? You don't need to wait. Even if you can be first, you have to be empathetic in this matter and ensure that your investment and the investment of your other colleagues will not be endangered. The danger here is that, Nabila, we are finding it difficult to attract philanthropists to patronize and dole out their investment of money into football. Now you are introducing a policy. Now you are introducing a policy, and the policy is inimical to the future of the game at the Division One level. And you don't feel it as a policymaker. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm taken aback when people take such a position. Oh, Palmer, why, why are you so bothered about this? My investment of 16 years is being endangered. And so I should stand there aloof and be smiling with you. No, anybody who perpetuates such a policy on me is, doesn't have me at heart. If, if, if the person doesn't have you at heart, what if the FA does not call for the external honorable congress? What happens? There are ramifications within the confines of the statutes. So we will look at the statutes and go according to what has been stated in the statutes. We will make sure that legally we push the FA to accept the fact that members are the owners of the FA and not the executives. We understand some members are pulling out. Any truth in this? They are coercing them to withdraw. I know the General Secretary, Prosper Harrison Ado, made contact with Kim Fisa. Judge Amwaku was very instrumental. They brought the Chief Executive, questioned him why he signed, and asked him to write a letter to withdraw as to whether it has been effected or not. That is not my Magana because we never elicited the signature of the chief executive, oh, sorry, the member of Kimfesa, general manager under duress. He willfully signed to the resolution. And just as the Far Rangers case, the FA indicated that Far Rangers has no business writing the withdrawal letter. We are also of the opinion that the president has been said that when somebody signs a resolution, there is no withdrawal because the statute does not indicate anywhere that having signed your resolution, you can withdraw. So why that window of opportunity being expressed clandestinely by the general secretary? Uh, uh, Palma, let's talk national football team uh, news now. Uh, we've spent a lot of time on the, um, the FA elections, uh, the current leadership of the FA, and um, uh, what they are doing, and specifically the, the, the new pyramid that you people are fighting. Uh, um, I think now we should talk about national team. Uh, you were part of the administration uh, that quite came close to winning it, but unfortunately, uh, you you never did. Um, do you do you think um, uh, we've got we've got what it takes to to win the African Cup of Nations um, uh, in Cameroon? Um, if if you take a look at the the current court of uh, players that we have, and <laughs> as someone who has done a lot of scouting of, of talents, do you think we've got that talent pool uh, capable of of winning the African Cup? I will look at the call up and the planning processes going into the Afcon before I vouch for Ghana. So far as the the Afghan is concerned. But if I'm not wearing my national colors or hat, I will tell you that's a Herculean tax for us to achieve. This is how I've done my analysis over the period. To win the Afghan, you need the caliber of players playing at a certain level in Europe, particularly English Premiership. Just just oppose that on what Mo Salah is doing for Liverpool in England. What money is doing for Liverpool 
in 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 a we have Mendy doing for Chelsea in England. It should clearly tell you that but for Pate, none of our players will be playing at a certain level, even Asna. But 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 we have Daniel Amate there. Leicester. But when you do comparative analysis of what this the stride or the thrill that these people are blazing in these uh, uh, lakes, we come next. We, we don't get close to them. You look at Nigeria. I was surprised to see them struggle. So I, I was very direct. The technical director or the coach could not give them what they are looking for. I wasn't surprised when finally I was told he's been sacked. But, but, but officially, that's, that's yet to be, to be made official, though. Oh, but you cannot have those galaxy of stars and play in an abysmal, abysmal manner that they did. No. They have, they have got good players to play in the manner that they did. Okay, Shaman. That is the problem we are having now. The call-up, if well done, will get the results. Ghana is always capable of doing anything. I will just wait for the call-up and the planning process before I pass my comment. Is the youth at cast with the Ghana FA? No. Why? That issue has been truncated. Uh, Nabila, we've had processes at CAS. Pay the appropriate legal fees or filing fee of 1,000 Swiss francs. Having paid that 1,000 uh, Swiss francs, we sent to CAS electronic version through our mail. I use my email for that purpose. Then we made the request to file through the e-filing. They gave us a form, we filled the forms, sent it to them. Then we were given access to the e-filing platform. Nabila, we've uploaded information severally on, on countless occasions. It all returned, the file is empty. The file is empty. We call CAS to seek assistance from the counselor. Anytime you call, they refer you to a counselor on the case. We called severally. We were told the counselor had gone for lunch. So we deemed it fit to write email to that effect, for which they recognized receipt of that email. Later on, CAS came back three days, having consistently done that. CAS came back to tell us that because we do not have the information in our e-filing platform, they cannot continue with the case. So sad and pathetic. We have sent them courier, voluminous document, courier, sister page document with evidence by courier DHL. They wrote to us and said, if they don't see evidence of the courier sent, they will discontinue with the case. We had the evidence because we had sent it earlier on. So we provided them with a copy of the receipt that was issued to us by DHL. They only came back and wrote that they have cited that we have sent the courier. They have also seen the email filing process. We have filed all the processes in here, but because the thing is not in the e-filing system, they cannot continue with the case. So it's purely due to Have they reimbursed your money? Electronic challenge. They, they told us that I should write for the refund of the money. Go to the CAS website. They have stated categorically that legal fees or cost of filing are non-refundable. They cannot refund it. But this one, they say they will refund. Are you, disapp are you disappointed that you, you, couldn't, you couldn't proceed at CAS to uh, have what you, you, uh, you termed as um, a poor decision making from the Ghana FA in relation to the how uh, Accra Lions qualify to, to the Ghana Premier League? How disappointed are you about that? Very much disappointed. This would have been a landmark case. My my solicitor will tell you that case was properly filed. We did all the research, and this time round, would have had the 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 provisional measures. We had cited all the authorities. 
that there is and would have had the provisional measures. I have grown to realize that if you are pursuing a matter and you get to a certain point and there are difficulties, do not push it beyond that point. I found it hard to forgive all those who had their plans. So strange. Somebody on the Division One League board played a prominent role in getting Tamayut out. We lost these two points. We are fully aware of those who orchestrated this plan for us to lose the two points. You are, you are armed with information, but you are not speaking about You are not speaking to those information available to you. Uh, if this had been an account program, I would have told you that let me literally uh, trans translate it. Matter, if it's not uh, appropriate, it's not delivered. That is, you deliver a case at the appropriate time. If you, are, you have clean conscience, if your heart is clean, any machinations, anything plotted against you, it will, people will come, and it will come to you naturally. Because you don't have any negative things about people. So when you move, I hear. The cast case that I told you, I knew whatever was going on here and there. I want to give you a byline. Ask yourself, when all issues had been delivered to cars. Why would somebody at the FA be looking for the file of my vetting at the vetting committee at the wee hours of the case? When the case had already been submitted, did Cass come back to the FA for further and better particulars? That was unknown to me with a quick question. The moment that incident happened, a very good friend called me and said, ah, they are asking for this file. This is what has happened. Is the case, are they still gathering uh, information? Of, I said, oh, we've already submitted our arguments. So this is not the time to say, ah, okay. He, he just wanted to find out. So I have a bed at the FA who always whispers to me when people are undoing my good works. You told me about a project for Tamayut last, last year, uh, about 30 acre land. One, one, have you started work on it? No. We have started engaging our partners in Europe and most of the equipment are being sent down. When it gets to the port, we are going to clear them. And our ambition now is to imbibe in the players the idea of dreaming, drinking, eating football, anytime tea. So the academy approach is what we intend doing. Anytime I go to Sogakope, I'm a happy person. It's not that I own the pro project, but I'm happy for Wafa. But they are doing what a modern football team should be doing. Keep the boys, teach them exactly what they have to do. Very soon, a very big announcement to be made. We are partnering one of the top, 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 if not the topmost club in England, one of the topmost clubs in England in this project of developing these players for Europe. There will be another club also in Holland who will also be part of this. Area. We are expecting a chief scout of that top, top, top team in England here next week. And at the appropriate time, we'll have that engagement and we'll see how destiny will take us. Who is the biggest export of Tamayut? Oh, certainly. It's undeniably uh, Thomas Party. But we never profited directly from his move. I'm always happy for him. In the sense that what we saw of him 10 years ago the world 
is seeing what we saw in him now. And I'm happy. Joseph Pencil brought the biggest revenue, undeniably. The question I asked myself, if he, had, if he had played in Ghana or been exported from Ghana, as people are claiming, could Tema Youth have rigged that money? It was due to the fact that he moved to Europe. He could rock shoulders with them. I'm anticipating another move from him this January. And all that I always pray for is that God should give me the patience, the heart to discover and rediscover talent. Uh, you just you, you mentioned that you didn't make money from um, the Thomas party, but when he moved to Arsenal, media reports said that your club made millions of euros or even thousands of euros from him. It's, uh, mi uh, thousands of euros from Thomas party's move, and that was quite quite uh, encouraging, and. I always call it solidarity as my pension money, which means that I have to work extra hard now to discover these players who will be globally competitive going forward. How much did you get from Thomas Partey's transfer to us now? Oh, this one. You let all those that I owe <laughs> knock at my door tomorrow morning. But it was quite encouraging. But we never benefited from a direct transfer to Atletico. That's what could have been. But when we pushed Atletico and realized that they were reluctant, we never pushed the matter further. But under the circumstances, it was the boys or the players' career that was important than any financial gains that would have made. So if Thomas Partey had remained with Atletico Madrid, there is no way Tamayut would have benefited from what we scouted for 10 years ago. Do you have sad moments of um, Kwesi. What happened to Kwesi following the number 12 expose? I wept that day at M Plaza. I wept for a very good reason because by benefit of hindsight, Kwesi should have been given the opportunity to sit outside the meeting that was held at M Plaza by the executive committee. Nabila, people may profess that they love you, they like you. It's when you get to a worst case scenario or a situation that is, is puts you in difficulty that you know those who truly care and love you. What happened at employer? We were having a meeting, and some of us were of the view that we should have respected Kwesi's last wishes of making Ankanap as the president of the FA to continue with that dispensation. If we had done so, FIFA would not have brought normalization. No lacuna would have been created because there will be an FA president. FA president will have the right to appoint his cabinet members, appoint a vice president in that regard. So it would have been four. There wouldn't have been any need for normalization. So that would have continued the legacy that we see fought for. But all these whittled within about 30 minutes, people lobbied, people engaged themselves in all sort of manipulations to ensure that that last wish was not carried through. I was given the privilege or the honor to chair that meeting. When documents were given to me, I protected the document unknowingly I was protecting a document that had already leaked out to interested parties. I just wanted to observe something as to who was leaking information from the FA. And that day, it was very clear to me. That is not the way to govern. And I must say, 
that when you even confront Kwesi and ask him, he will tell you that there are certain decisions that he took in the spell of moment that he shouldn't have. The resignation, I am of the view that he should have postponed it, made sure that the FA was on its feet before resigning. But that did not happen. Akinab could have been appointed as the vice. And when the FA is not there, and when the FA president is not there, it's the vice who acts in his stead. Or the vice becomes automatically the president of the FA. All these necessary structures should have been put in place before leaving. This is by benefit of hindsight. I stood and fought, not because I don't respect but by the fact that my investment was being endangered. Anytime you want to endanger my investments, you will not have the best of me. I will, not, I will not be a gentleman. I will make sure that my rights are protected. And that's exactly what I did. Some of the issues I raised within that time frame, I don't know where it came from, but that is how come in the Quran or in the Bible, we tend to have situational leadership. When somebody is not there, somebody pops up to show leadership. That's exactly what is needed at any particular point in time. But I was very, very sad that Ecolosos had hesitated in the manner that happened. Thank you very much, Palmer. Um, that was Wilfred Kwekuose, um, owner, Tama Youth FC, former Black Stars Management Committee chairman, uh, speaking to us on a plethora of issues ranging from how his career started and ended on the day he wept when Kwesi Nyentechi, former president of the Ghana FA, former FIFA Foundation member, former FIFA Executive Council member, was hunted out of office following the premiere of an expose into alleged corruption and match fixing in Ghana football. It's been a pleasure coming away with this conversation. I am Muftar Nabila Abla. Continue to enjoy the rest of our programs. Thank you very much.